Hey everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with another uh, COVID update for the week. You know, we've been doing this for quite some time and for those of you who've been following me for a while, remember back in the springtime, Judy Mikovits talked about uh, the pandemic video and I did a couple of debunking videos about that that since really got you know many hundreds of thousands of views and thousands of nasty comments from People who didn't like the fact that I called Dr. Mikovits out on her nonsense, which has subsequently been completely disproven. Um, time has, has proved all of her allegations to be false. And now, you know, I get a lot of links and messages from people asking me to, you know, their, my opinion about different videos. And the one I keep getting is Dr. Simone Gold. And Dr. Gold is a member of the America's Frontline Doctors Group which is a funny name because they, none of them really are frontline doctors or, you know, they were the ones that got up on, on Capitol Hill and, and said to give everybody hydroxychloroquine. Um, the vast majority of those doctors never see COVID patients. They're ophthalmologists and pathologists. Dr. Gold herself is trained in emergency medicine, just like me, but doesn't actually practice, hasn't practiced at least since the, the, the summertime when she lost her job. So she's really not taking care of COVID patients at all, but she claims that she has all this information. And the one video in particular I've been sent a lot is this long interview with her. It's over an hour long. And I thought I'd go through some of her claims and kind of tell you what my opinion of them is. Um, you know, realize that she's a political animal. She was rushed to Capitol. She's been arrested and charged um, as one of the people that entered the Capitol. She's very much a, um, got a political um, motive for a lot of the things that she does, not really a science-based or um, something probably looking out for the best of, of people. Um, you know, I think the first part of that virus where she, or of the video rather, where she refers to it continuously as the Wuhan virus, kind of, puts a little bit of a political bent. And you know me, I don't like to get into politics. I think your politics are your, uh, your business, but the science needs to stand on its own because it's the science that's gonna direct us through this. Um, she then spends a lot of time talking about the safety of hydroxychloroquine. And you know we know that hydroxychloroquine can be used safely. There is very, very mixed messaging about whether it's effective or not. And we know that there are other medications that are, seem to be more effective with much less risk. Hydroxychloroquine, if used incorrectly, can cause fatal arrhythmias. Furthermore, there's been plenty of studies that show it hasn't really had much of an effect. There's some other studies that show it, it may, but it's certainly not a cure for the virus. And so to kind of tout that as a cure is irresponsible to say the least. Um, the next thing she talks about is the fact that there's been no vaccines for other coronaviruses. And that's true um, because SARS and MERS are, are the two previous like serious coronaviruses that we've dealt with. And the fact is that both of those viruses caused, became contagious after people got infected and showed symptoms. So you, you were not infectious until you had symptoms. And it was fairly easy to isolate those people and, and protect others by wearing personal protective gear. And while there was some preliminary work on doing vaccines, there was never any money for it. So, you know, really the reason that there are no vaccines for SARS and MERS is because A, they were easily to, to identify and to, to uh, quarantine those people. And also there just wasn't any money for it. The difference between SARS-CoV-2 is that people are infectious far earlier and they develop infectious, uh, the ability to infect other people before they get symptoms. And so a vaccine is really important for that. And plus we pump billions and billions and billions of dollars into it, so the money was there. Um, you know, she talks about there being no animal studies on uh, these, these vaccines. Well, that's patently untrue. Just, just search the studies. There, there clearly were animal studies done on all of these vaccines, so that's just a flat out lie. Um, she claims that mRNA is a brand new technology. Well, that's not true. We, people have been, you know, mRNA vaccines have been the holy grail, but mRNA research goes back, you know, two, three decades. Um, and we've been actively working on bringing these things to market for a long time because there's such great um, potential for not only for vaccines, but really using mRNAs for medicines to treat especially rare diseases. And there's, a, a, I think, a TED Talk from the, one of the head scientists from Moderna that's worth the 10 or 15 minutes to watch it, that he talks about some of these potential applications for messenger RNA medicines, which are, are essentially what we're using for this vaccine. 
Um, the next big thing they talk about, and, and there's another video, folks, of, of this panel discussion that she's on, and they keep talking about antibody-dependent enhancement, um, which is this idea that if you, um, you can vaccinate people and essentially make them hypersensitive to the virus, and then if they get exposed to the wild-type virus, they get a much more severe um, response to the vaccine and, and get very, very sick and die. And there's another video out there that's you know basically predicting that we're gonna have millions and millions of deaths. Well, the fact of the matter is that, you know yes, it's been seen in the laboratory, but great pains were taken to avoid those problems with these vaccines because it's a known problem. And, you know, I, I don't, honestly, I, I really think the anti-vaccine people are getting a little apoplectic because of the lack of serious side effects. We just haven't seen any of this. And there's been 150, what did I write down? 176 million doses given worldwide. So if antibody dependent enhancement is really a problem, we should be seeing you know, hundreds and uh, maybe millions of people with these problems, yet we're not seeing it. Um, on the panel discussion, they, they raised the point that only nine people in the uh, Pfizer uh, trial that got vaccinated got COVID. Well, that's because the vaccine is so effective, very few people got it. But um, the AstraZeneca trial, which was um, very well done, and they actually tested everybody in that trial every week for COVID, what they found was an equal infection rate of the virus in the vaccinated and unvaccinated group. And we've talked about this before. You know, the vaccine is not a sterilizing vaccine. What it does is it absolutely prevents you from dying and absolutely prevents you from getting very sick from COVID. It does not prevent you from catching it or giving it to other people. It prevents the virus from moving from the mucous membranes where it's really benign into the bloodstream where it causes problems. So, Based on that data, about half of, you know, the equal amounts of both groups got infected. So if you extrapolate that out to 176 million people vaccinated and the, and the many, many millions of people that have come down with COVID, we can anticipate that many millions of those people have been exposed to the wild type coronavirus or, or that causes uh, COVID with no ill effects. And again, you know, if you, I just, right before I did this video, I went to the VAERS database, which is the database that tracks potential side effects. And I searched for number one deaths. And so far, so far, since we started vaccinating, there have been 602 deaths reported. Now, we don't know if those deaths were caused by the vaccine. They were just people that died within a couple of weeks of receiving their vaccine. The vast majority of those people are elderly nursing home and hospice patients, which have a high rate of, of death anyway. But irregardless, let's just say for sake of argument, that all 602 of those people that are listed in the database were actually killed by the vaccine. We've given 55 million people in the U.S. that vaccine. So to figure out the percentage, we would take 50, you know, we take that 602 and divide it by 55 million. And what do we get? We get 0.0001%. So absolutely microscopic number of cases. And that's assuming that all 600 of those are actually caused by the virus and the, or the vaccine, excuse me. And we don't have any evidence that those are just cases that are being investigated. Um, in terms of life-threatening reports, um, there's been 465 and people hospitalized in relationship or in proximity to the virus or to the vaccine administration, about 1,374. So we're talking minuscule numbers compared to the 55 million who have been vaccinated in the U.S. and the 176 million worldwide. So you know, antibody uh, dependent enhancement, if it was going to happen, certainly would have shown up by now. We're not seeing it at all. She raises the specter of fertility problems. Well, you know, there's no evidence at all. That's pure speculation. And furthermore, there was a pretty good study that looked at 400,000 pregnant women who developed COVID while they were pregnant. And guess what? Those women had a three time higher rate of ICU admission than non-pregnant people. And these people were young, 14 to age 50, pregnant uh, women, and they had a 70% increase in mortality rate. So pregnancy, you know, and, and furthermore, those, um, the babies were, were basically unaffected. But we don't see any evidence of um, vaccine-related pregnancy problems so far. Now, it's early. Again, there's no way to tell for sure. I think you've got to be cautious. However, we know that if you get COVID while you're pregnant, it's very dangerous. Um, 
I think that uh, that covers the majority of, of their claims. I don't believe any of them. We know that the, the numbers tell the tale. And if indeed we were going to see all these things, we would have seen, seen them by now. I mean, again, we've had millions and millions of people vaccinated and we're just not seeing the side effects that they, they claim. Um, you know, I hate to say it, but it's almost, I get a lot of hate mail from anti-vaccine people, but honestly, it almost feels like they're, they want people to have problems to prove their point, which is, is sick, right? Like, we should be happy that we've got these vaccines that absolutely prevent us from getting sick and are really causing very minimal side effects. So anyway, that's my response to Simone Gold. Um, I, I think that all of her stuff is, is you know, is designed to elicit um, a response. She's got other motives. I think do a little bit of background research into who she is and what she stands for. Um, she's self-promoting herself. And again, I don't think that there's any evidence that, that behind any of the videos that she's posted. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail about, about this, but when I have 30 or 40 or 50 people sending me these videos, I think it's reasonable to address the claims and you know, hopefully give you guys some clarity. Uh, please put your comments below. As usual, if you find this useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, like us and follow us on Facebook. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear your masks, Get immunized if you're eligible. Look out for yourselves, for your families and those around you. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. We have more wellness stuff coming up this week, okay?